Welcome to the Financial Coaches Podcast, where we talk about how to build your practice from startup to scale up while being the kind of coach your clients crave. Finally, a podcast for financial coaches. Here are your hosts, Maria Casillas and Cody Sizemore. All right. Welcome back to season two of the official Financial Coaches Podcast. Uh, my name is Cody Sizemore, and I am here not only with Maria Casillas, who, as you guys have known over the last year, has been my lovely co-host, but we're also joined by not just one, not just two, but three special guests today as well. Today, we have a repeat guest, which uh, we actually just had on our last episode, uh, which is Sarah Jones. Uh, so Sarah, welcome back. Um, we also have Mike Keneally, uh, who is part of the New Money Habits camp. And for those of you who don't know, he's also the producer of this fine podcast as well. And we also have Coach Nino Villa, who's also part of New Money Habits uh, camp as well. And one of the co-hosts alongside with Sarah Jones of the New Money Habits podcast as well. And also Nino has a nice little kicker as well, because as you hear him speak, which I'm going to give him the opportunity to right now, you might recognize his voice as the intro guy on our podcast. So Nino, why don't you say hi first? That way people can be like, oh, that's the guy. Okay. Welcome to All the right. Financial Coaches Podcast, <laughs> where we talk yeah. about this, that, and the other. Yes. Hi, everybody. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mike, Sarah, how you doing? Great. Glad to be here. Congrats on a year of podcasting. It's been an exciting year for you guys. Some amazing stuff you've put out there. So thank you for being consistent. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Good morning. Good mo well, I guess it's morning where I'm at now, but hello, everyone. Thank you for um, having me. Um, on today. I'm so excited for this episode. And um, I'm just probably more excited and more happy to share this time with you all um, in gaining more insight and learning more. So thank you. Mm -hmm. And Maria, how are you I'm feeling doing today? great. Thank you for asking. Allergies are a little oh. acting up right now. So, you know, hopefully you don't hear me sneezing too much in the background or rubbing my eyes too much online. But outside of that, I'm doing fantastic. I'm actually really excited about today because what we have done for this anniversary episode, everyone, is we have gone through and picked out some clips from our most downloaded episodes. So you told us what were your favorites and we wanted to kind of pull those all together and just kind of share with you some of the thoughts that we have, uh, you know, just it's, it's so fun to have just different perspectives. And obviously Cody and I, you're hearing our thoughts on these clips, but we wanted to bring in some other perspectives from other coaches and listeners and just to kind of hear like, what are some of the things they pick out? So I'm excited to do that with everyone today. And hopefully this will bring you as much value as it has for us. Just kind of looking back at the past year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And for those of you who have, who have been with us for, you know, the last year, or at least as of recently, um, we just, first of all, want to say thank you so much for your support. Like this has been, an amazing experience for us. Um, you know, not only have we been able to provide value through this, through this podcast, but I feel now I can't speak for Maria, but I feel like this podcast has been super, super valuable for me as well. Um, cause I've learned a lot in this entire process too. Um, and it's been a really cool opportunity to like discuss this, not just with Maria, but also have the opportunity to connect with so many different coaches over the last year that all are diff they're all in different areas of their coaching journey. You know, like there's some that are just starting off. Uh, there's some that have been doing it for years and just being able to talk to them and, and get their perspectives on things and help them with their questions and even pick their brain on things has honestly been a huge blessing. So, I just want to take this opportunity to say thank you for just listening to the show, to supporting us. Uh, and, and of course, like going into this next year, you know, this is the official beginning of season two. Um, and we're very, very excited for this. And like Maria said, we're just going to review some stuff, talk about it, uh, and then move forward with it. 
So with that being said, why don't we just bring up this first clip? So this first clip is actually from our very first episode of this show. Uh, so literally from like a year ago, I think almost to the mm -hmm. day, maybe it's like a few days off, but it's pretty dang close. Um, so Mike, why don't you bring that clip up real fast? The problem was I was using a prescribed plan that was not my own. And so when I was out there helping people, there was still something at my gut level that didn't feel authentic. And so I grappled with that for about two and a half years in the beginnings of my coaching business. So even a year past where you are right now. And mm -hmm. when I when I really stopped to take a look at it, I call it my existential crisis. <laughs> I realized that the reason I didn't feel any fulfillment before was because when we were going on that journey, it was a journey to a goal. It was not a journey to who we wanted to become. And so we weren't really paying attention to who we were becoming in the process. And it was all yeah. based on numbers. And, and that, was the, well, that was the biggest feedback we had gotten. Yeah, well, that's really, really powerful. You know, it's not, you know, I, I think that we as coaches or, you know, even our clients sometimes, they think, uh, that the numbers are all what matters. And yeah. at the end of the day, it's actually a very small portion. So, um, you know, if you wouldn't mind, I, I am curious to see if you could unpack that a little bit more. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, in, for us, when, when we were not, well, how do I unpack this for you in a, in a succinct way? Let me, let me say this. As a coach, part of what didn't feel good for me is that back in the days of counseling, I knew that what was making me a very good counselor was my ability to meet someone where they were, to not have this prescribed thing that said, here's how you, here's how you get out of your mess, right? It was to right. listen to them, to listen for understanding, not to listen to respond. And so when I decided right. to start doing that with clients, then it, I felt like I was becoming more aligned with what I knew was the right approach, right? And also, I started speaking differently. I said, let's not focus on this number. Let's actually focus on who you are becoming. So if you want to become somebody who is an investor in your future self, that's different than somebody who's not able to spend money. Right. I'm not going to I don't right. want to get stuck in this scarcity mindset. I want to actually be able to to be abundant and have that intentionality that goes along with it. So that for me, that was huge for my clients. That was huge. And what I started to find out was that for financial coaches, that was a very important missing piece because so many financial coaches come into this industry with this prescribed plan. And usually the prescribed plan is just the plan that they went through to get out of their own mess, right? So it doesn't even have right. to be the same one that you did or the same one that I did. It's just this idea that, hey, this is what I did to get out of this mess. And so I'm going to prescribe this to you to get out of your mess. And we forget about the human person that is in there, right? Personal finance yeah. needs to be personal. That's right. And so yeah. we, we as coaches especially it's, it's one of the things that I found just for myself was I want to help other coaches understand not just the importance of meeting someone where they are, but truly knowing the skills, how to do that. Because listening for understanding and to reflect back is a skill that not everybody has. And it's not what it's not one that is required to be in this industry. And so I'm just really excited to be able to help people along the way. And I think that what they're going to find is that once they're once they can figure some of that out, then they're also going to be able to do what I did and figure out who they are as a coach. Right. Because they're going to start to go, I don't have to do this prescribed thing. And so then it gives them permission to mold themselves into the coach that they actually want to be. And that yeah. was huge for me. All right. Well, if I may, I'd like to just kind of start because um, I want to just share with everybody as a financial coach starting off early, I was guilty of everything that Maria just said. I was completely beholden to a specific type of program. And so then I made all of my clients beholden to that program. And it really took me probably a year and a half to realize and really working with a number of different clients in all different sorts of situations, whether they were single, 
they were married, they had kids, whatever it was, started to realize this cookie cutter approach and, and forcing everyone through the same process or steps just wasn't working. I was getting frustrated. My clients were getting frustrated. And so I, I needed to kind of expand the way I was thinking about how I truly help somebody. So we talk a lot about meeting people where they are. And I had to start doing that. I had to let go of this rigid prescription so that I could truly start helping people. And when I did that, my my coaching practice grew by leaps and bounds because now it wasn't about trying to cram everybody through one solution. It was about finding solutions with all of my clients, whatever that might look like. I would uh, totally agree because I also struggle with that too. Um, and I think that the fact that you were able to do that um, and, and really – anyone who's listening who has gone into that like new phase of coaching uh, for someone to be able to do that. That's a pretty big accomplishment because I think that in order for someone to do that, they have to let go of some form of ego to where they're like, I have all the answers kind of thing. And for you to be able to say, Hey, maybe this thing that I thought was the answer, no matter what, isn't the answer. And I'm willing to actually like give something else a shot, something I've never done before, something that, you know, I personally uh, am very new to, but to be open to that whole experience uh, is, is very scary as a coach, I feel. So to be able to do that, is actually quite the accomplishment. And I think that that just goes into like the maturity of your coaching um, as you've progressed throughout the years. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I love yeah. that too, because, you know, in this clip and just this conversation now, because, you know, I have been reflecting on where I was when I started my coaching practice. And one thing, you know, I did go through one of the programs I'll say that was, I'll say kind of very rigid, but what I also did was take a look at my own journey. And when I tried to follow that very rigid program in my own journey, how it, the, the areas that didn't work. And so how can I then use my experience through my own journey to help other clients, not with a prescribed plan, right? But reflecting on my own, um, my own life and the, the, um, I'll, I'll just call them roadblocks that my husband and I ran into while we were on our own journey and trying to follow this rigid plan and, and the things, the areas that didn't work and what I pulled from that. And then how can I then incorporate that, right? Not as my own journey, but how can I incorporate some of those pieces into helping clients? And, and I'll be honest, I think that that's maybe an area in, in some of the trainings that are out there that, that don't focus on right? That it's really about meeting your clients where they're at and, and really listening to them and their situation and what they tried in the past, um, what did work and what didn't work and why they feel, right? What was successful and what, where, where are the areas that they feel were not successful and really listening to them to help them go forward in a direction that feels right for them. And I want to yeah. piggyback off of what you just said there, Sarah, for just a second. And I'm going to paraphrase something I've heard Maria say a thousand times. And that is uh, how just because you went through like a debt-free journey, let's say, and you got yourself out of debt and used that program, that doesn't automatic automatically make you a financial coach who can then coach other people. Because so often you're just relying on that program that you went through. Well, there's dozens of programs out there. There are dozens of different ideas and ways of doing things. And what I really appreciate about this group of coaches is that we've all committed to, we don't care about this guru's this, that, and the, the third, or this person's, it, it's let's take all of the information, all of the knowledge that we have. And then to your point, Sarah, listen to our clients. What have they tried? What have they what do they use in the past? What works for them? What doesn't? It's it's something is 
you know, Sarah and I talk on our podcast about like these little differences. We both believe in the principle that there are certain um, elements to a budget that people might um, pay cash for. And Sarah is very, uh, uh, a big fan of the actual cash envelope system. And I like digital um, envelopes. We both believe in the same principle. We just have different ways of enacting that principle. And we, we take that and we use that with our clients. And, and I think that shows the, I'll use Cody's word, the maturity of a financial coach is it's not rigid and it's not my way or the highway. It's let's figure out what works for you. And and if I may, I think I think one of the core pieces here is not just the processes that work or don't work, but like why do they work or not work? And and is that because of who this person is trying to become? And I think that that was one of the core pieces of what that clip said was that when we focus on who we are becoming as coaches and who our clients are becoming, it it becomes a lot easier to listen for understanding and for us as coaches to be able to draw connections for those individuals on if something's not working, is it not working because it's not in alignment with who you're trying to become? And it just kind of gives us a language with which to speak to these individuals and also to ourselves. You know, if we are trying to develop ourselves as coaches, it, we get, we get so wrapped up. I know I do. I get wrapped up sometimes in what is the newest and, and greatest approach to do? What is the the newest, um, you know, social media thing to try? All of these different things. But if I'm not a social media person or if I, if I don't like, you know, such and such, and that's not even like it doesn't align with who I'm trying to work with anyway, then it doesn't matter. And I'm not going to feel fulfilled. And I think that's where a lot of, at least for my journey, things became lackluster. And, and that's why they became lackluster because I wasn't really focused on who it was that I was becoming as a coach and helping those individuals become who they were as individuals. So uh, that's just something I wanted to throw out there because I do think that whether we're working with an individual, a couple or family, I like to have them discover who they are so that we can figure out how are those processes going to work or not work? Yeah, I. so there's two things I want to say. Um, first of all, you had mentioned in that clip, Maria, about the difference between listening to respond versus listening to understand. Mm -hmm. um, and I have to say that that little quote is super, super powerful because, guys, could you imagine... I mean, really, could you imagine if not just us as coaches, but our culture listened to people to understand <laughs> versus <laughs> listening to respond? Mm -hmm. How much cooler of a country we, would we live in? Like, seriously, mm -hmm. like, like our world would be a, such a better place, such a better place. So if we can start that and actually give someone like the experience of actually being listened to, to be understood as coaches in our world, that just doesn't happen very often. So that might be the first time that someone actually experiences that maybe ever. Yeah, I agree I with that. I can guarantee you probably in a long, in, in a long time, but possibly even ever. Yeah. I agree with that. I think we could do that in our families as well. You know, there's lots of, there's lots of places we could apply that. I want to say that be to that point, Cody, we could be the best coaches and know almost nothing. All we need to know how to do is actually listen to somebody. I mean, I've, I've seen, mm -hmm. I've seen clients where they're like, that was the best session ever. You're amazing. And I'm like, I might have said four words. Like I, I didn't even say anything <laughs> during that session. So, you know, it, it, a few days ago, yeah, the guy was just talking, 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 right. talking. And I was just like, mm -hmm. right, yep. because we mm -hmm. do believe we are the most interesting people on the planet. And so when we're given that opportunity to talk about ourselves for so long, we really feel like that person helped us a whole lot. So that's a really, really good point. I was just going to say to that point that we're really creating an opportunity and creating a space for clients to not only feel heard, but to be seen and to share things that they've maybe never said out loud to anyone else before, right? And it's really about creating that space for them to be brave, that that place for them to be courageous, right? And um, that's, I think, kind of the, in my 
opinion um, and the way I run my, my business and when I'm um, working with um, clients is I want to create that space that they know that they can come and share, right? To not say, um, what am I trying to, it's really creating that space, right? Just for them to be able to open up and to say things out loud that they've never been able to say before. And then it allows them to hear themselves differently. It allows them to hear their situation differently because they played all this stuff around in their heads so much, right? And so by us being listeners and allowing them to speak, it's allowing them to hear their own situation very differently than they've probably ever heard it before. Um, Great and I think that that's powerful because that leads to them being able to see their own areas of, wow, this insight, right? Here's a breakthrough. And that's why I think it's so powerful when we can sit and just listen. And they're like, this is an amazing session because we've created the space for them to be able to view their situation differently. Yeah. Well, when you, when you allow them to have that space, uh, it, it allows them to get out of their own head, you know, and, and to be able to, talk about these things that are happening in their head but then maybe sometimes when they actually like speak it out loud they hear themselves say these things and certain dots start to connect and they're like oh well that makes sense i don't know why i never thought about that before you know and it's and it's and it all starts from just creating that space of like hey i'm here to listen to you to not tell you what to do next i'm here to listen to you to understand and help you understand as well you know, and a big part of that is what Maria had, uh, just said too about like focusing on who you want to become throughout this whole process as well. And that's something I don't want to skip over because that's something that I think is very, very important. Uh, you know, too often we focus on just what we want, you know, whether, whether it be the client focusing on that or even us as coaches. But if we skip over things like who we want to be and also why we want to become this person or why we want to achieve these goals. That's really important too. And that kind of segues into our next episode that we want to talk about, which is talking about finding your why, right? So we're going to take a few moments. We're going to listen to a clip from this episode and then we're going to discuss that too. So Mike hit it. So let's talk about the Wright brothers, the people who first, you know, developed flight. Airplane, right? right? You know? Okay, perfect. <laughs> yes. So the Wright brothers themselves, um, they were just two brothers. They did not have a lot of support through, throughout their endeavors. Um, you know, the government did not support them. Um, they didn't have any sort of like media support. They didn't really have very much financial support. Um, they themselves were not rich. They were just average people. Um, and they were college, you know, they were not college educated people either. Um, mm -hmm. and actually at the same time that they were trying to develop this, this flight, you know, this airplane, um, there was someone else at the very same time that was also trying to do that as well. And his name was Samuel Pierpont Langley. Now the difference between him and the Wright brothers was that Samuel actually had all of the things working for him. He had the money. He himself was already a rich person. So he had the money, he had the funding. The government was on his side. They were trying to make it easier for him because they saw that, you know, this, this guy is like a well-established, uh, successful man, and we're gonna put all of our chips into him and help him develop this, right? And on top of that, you know, all of the newspaper outlets were covering Samuel Pierpont Langley. They were supporting him. They were hyping him up. All eyes were on Samuel Pierpont Langley. But the difference between Samuel Pierpont Langley and the Wright brothers was that the Wright brothers had their why. They had a reason as to why they were doing it. And Samuel Pierpont Langley, he was more so just chasing the riches and the fame that came with it and you know the the credibility that came with this right whereas the wright brothers they they legitimately had a strong deep emotional connection to want to be a contributor to progressing the human race and and and, and you know basically implementing this new thing which was flight and 
even though they had all of the things working against them, the one thing that they had that Samuel Pierpont Langley did not was a strong, rooted, thought out, and intentional reason as to why they're mm -hmm. doing something. And that's why everyone knows the Wright brothers and not very many people know Samuel Pierpont Langley. In fact, this might be the first time you ever even heard his name. Yeah, so who knew we were going to walk our listeners through a history lesson? I love yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, and one, if I can, one of the things I heard you say, because you kind of did say that Mr. Langley, I believe you said is his name, had a why, but it was not an emotionally connected one. His his why was, you know, I, I want to be famous. I want to be rich, right? Yep. And so because he didn't have that emotional connection, then it, it wasn't real for him. It, it wasn't a driver for him. And then when you talked about the Wright brothers after that, you said that they had a well thought out and intentional why behind their, their purpose. And uh, so I think that's really important to just point out because so many times you say, well, here's why, you know, and I do have a reason why. So don't tell me that I don't know, you know, but it's what are you emotionally connected to? It, it's not just a surface thing, yeah. right? Yeah. So I love that example. Thank you for sharing that. Well, that was another great clip, and, and it's so important to talk about uh, understanding why we do anything in life, um, whether it is developing our coaching practice or working with a client and helping them understand why they're going to go through this difficult process sometimes of, of eliminating unwanted debt or whatever it is they're trying to accomplish. And I talk about that with clients a lot, about don't trade what you really want for what you want right now. In other words, there are some times, Nino says this nicely, there are seasons when you may have to practice delayed gratification. You may put off some things that you want right now because you want something bigger down the road. But if you don't have that bigger, clearly defined, and you don't have that goal set and focused on it with laser precision, it's going to be really hard to say, I can pass this thing up right now in order to get what it is that I really want in the future. So I think that's important, really important conversation when you're working with clients and new clients and helping them understand that, you know, this is something that they can do, but when it gets hard, you have to know why you're doing it. I agree. And and I remember picking it out then, and I'm going to pick it out right now too, that the two main things that are necessary for developing a really strong why are having an emotional connection and having some level of intentionality. I mean, I know that Cody talked about how you know, the Langley guy, like, yeah, he was chasing fame and chasing those things, but it was really the, when the Wright brothers said, I want to actually be a part of something bigger than us. I want to, I want to be a part of this new thing called flight. Like that's pretty flippin' amazing. And, and that kept, kept them going even when every door that they started to open was shut behind them. And so having that level of emotional connection and then again, just that intentionality of like, if this happens, then I've got plan B and plan C and, and just kind of going about that. I think those are two of the main pieces that we really need to talk about. And I love the way that you brought that um, into our, our real lives, Mike, where, you know, like you have to sometimes give up what you want for now for what you actually want. Great way to put it in it. You know, I was reflecting too on some of my, you know, when I started my coaching journey and, and I was debt free, um, minus my mortgage when I started my coaching practice. And I thought everybody wanted to be debt free and I wanted to, that was my why, right? Like I want to help everybody be debt free. And what I learned very early on is that not everybody actually wants to be debt free. It's not what is right for them. So maybe not right now. Right. And I was so focused on, Hey, you could be debt free, debt free, debt free. And, and I had to then start looking at my own journey and, and start pulling out, okay, what does debt free actually mean for me? Mm -hmm. Right. What does it mean for me? And part of that was clarity, um, clarity in, and, and maybe, um, confidence in making more choices, right? Confidence in the choices that my husband and I made, even if they didn't work out the way that we thought the, the choice was going to work out, but knowing that we made the right decision based on the information that we had. And then really the ability, the ability to take action no matter what comes our way. And when I started digging, that's what I really wanted to help clients with. 
right? It wasn't the debt-free part, which is where I started my coaching practice. And so many people, um, I've got clients that have come back now and said, Sarah, we're debt-free. Now what? Mm -hmm. Right? Like now what? And so that's a good reminder for me that it's, again, it's not just the dollars and cents part of this, right? It is the very much the emotional piece of how can we get to that emotional connection with the clients, right? What's really, um, what's really driving them to want to make some changes in their life, right? And it more often than not, it doesn't have to do with the money part of it. Yeah. And even when we were chasing the debt-free title, it was the chase that was the excitement. So that, that was where the emotional connection was for us was just that it was like a rush, a high. It was almost like riding on a roller coaster, you know, like you knew that it was, it was exciting. But then when we got there, it was very, I think I used the word earlier, lackluster. It's like, now what? Now what do we do? And so it's, it's really encouraging to know that you have clients who are coming to you saying the same thing and that you've been able to say, yeah, there's something beyond that. That was just a, a stop along the way. Mm -hmm. I think that a huge reason as to why this needs to have some sort of like emotional tie to it is because if you, if people, if you were to go back and listen to this episode as a whole, um, I go in to talk about like my whole U curve analogy of like, you know, where the different stages are of your, of a person's journey. And uh, the bottom of the U is somewhere that I, I personally, since that per, uh, podcast, I've given it a name, and I call it the pit of despair. All right, that's a really heavy name because it's a really heavy place to be. And when you're in that place, you are going to be met with not just one emotion, but so many different emotions, right? And if you have a why that isn't, emotionally attached, then those negative emotions are ultimately going to overtake you and cause you to want to give up um, or pull out or ultimately fail at what you're trying to accomplish. Whether that be a client uh, who's trying to pay, pay off debt or buy a house or start investing or whatever it might be, or whether that be a coach who's trying to start a business or trying to scale their business. If you don't have that emotional tie to it, it makes it really easy for your negative emotions to take over and to control the outcome. And that's why I think that, you know, the Wright brothers were able to actually like pull this off is because they had something that was an emotional tie to this. And that's why Samuel Pierpont Langley couldn't do it is because when he was met with this quote unquote pit of despair, that bottom of the U, he just didn't have what it took to, to get through that. Yeah. Well, there were other ways to become famous and other ways to become rich, right? Right. Exactly. So, but for and the other guys, there's only one way to be a huge part of creating flight. Right. Right. So having that emotional attachment is uh, very, very important to prevailing through these, these moments of, of trial that we all face, whether it be our clients or the coaches ourselves, because I don't know about you guys. Maybe I'm alone in this. Who knows? But I have trials <laughs> in my coaching, uh, coaching practice. Like there's been several times where I've been like, Oh man, this is a lot of work. I don't know if I want to keep doing this. You know, there's been several times that that's mm -hmm. happened, but I've always gone back to that emotional tied why. And, and I've said, I can't give up on this. And here's why. It's bigger than me. There's a purpose here. And I need to fulfill it. Not just that I want to, but I need to. So I just choose to keep going. I love it. That's fantastic. Yeah. So when we decide to keep going, we need to figure out how to let people know what we do. And why we do it, yeah. <laughs> which will bring us to our next clip, which is um, creating a standout statement. And this one, I think, is going to be going to give us some really cool tips in there. So I look forward to that. Mike, if you wouldn't mind queuing that up for us, we'd appreciate it. Yeah, the whole purpose of this is to start a conversation. Right. Um, and that's why, like my statement, before I even tell people what I do, I ask them a question. Right. 
you know, and do you I, wait and them have them paid. acknowledge? Yeah. Yes. Do you wait? So, so that's an important piece too, that I want to make sure people hear, because when you read it out loud, there's not really a, we're, we're not, we're not role playing. So you don't hear somebody say, well, yes, Cody, I, I have noticed that. Or no, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't yeah. even know who millennials, what do you mean by millennials? Right. Um, but just remember that when Cody asked the question, so do you know how, you know, driven millennials struggle with X, Y, and Z? He's pausing and he's waiting to see what that person says. And yeah, it, I've, I've had people say like, you know, p- people who are literally like, my ideal client have asked mm-hmm. me this and I've asked them that question and I'm just like, you know, and I've said something along the, along the lines of that. Like, you know, you know how like a lot of people our age struggle with feeling held back with their money and I pause mm-hmm. and then they come back and sometimes they're, they like laugh and they're like, Oh my God. <laughs> yes. Right. Trust me. Like we get it. That mm-hmm. is, that is me. Right. <laughs> you right. know? And I'm like, well, I mean, you're not alone and to be honest with you. Like what I do is this. Yep. And then they're like, dang, because they just, they just told you that, that they're your they are who you help. Yep. Yep. That's you right. Know? That's right. And so the other thing I want to point out here is that you, when you said that to them, you said, do you know how people our age dot, dot, dot. And the reason I want to throw that in there is because I want you guys to hear that even though he has a script, if you will, he understands how and when to deviate from that script. So if, if yeah. he's actually talking to his ideal client, then if he said, do you know how sometimes driven millennials are dot, 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 they're going to be like, dude, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm one of those, you know, and, and you're, I feel like you're talking through a script. Whereas yeah. since you saw your audience and you're like, hey, you know how people our age or people your age or people that you grew up with, it does, if, if you're not the same age as the individual, uh, that you can actually tailor that message to the person you're talking to, especially if it's a one-on-one. Whereas if this, you know, the script is more like uh, if you're writing to somebody or whatever, that and it's a group of people, you might not be able to tailor it quite as much. Uh, but I do want you to hear that because it's so important to realize that just because you come up with this, it doesn't mean you have to stick to it like just letter for letter, word for word. And yeah. I'm sharing that as an overthinker because that yeah. would be where I'm like, I got to get this right so that it works for everybody. I'm like, no, no, you don't. It's it just get, give yourself a framework with a formula and then know how to plug that framework into other like random people. Yeah. You, you have to be able to read the room and, and know your audience, right. you know, like this, this should not be a script, you know, Robotic. you're writing it as a script to have as like a basis to kind yeah. of work off of. But then the ultimate goal is to make it be a conversation starter. So yes. the, 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 the more natural and the more like, you know, just relaxed and just seamless that you can be with it, the more effective it's going to be. Okay. Okay. Um, the other thing too, is that when we have, well, I was thinking about like, I, I know we talked about this in an episode in the past, but I'm going to bring it up anyway. It feels like it's going off topic, but it's not totally. Do you remember where we talked about communication in marriages and in relationships? And we did the I feel statement and mm-hmm. it was very formulaic where it was like, I feel blank when you blank because blank. And what I teach people is you don't need to talk to your spouse and say, I feel sad when you, you know, leave the toilet seat up because it, it you know, I don't know, adds more work to my day. That feels robotic and it feels weird. The reason that you use a formula at all is to just make sure you have all of the components that are necessary in order to have the conversation. So I would say that's very similar to this. I mean, when, when Cody laid out the actual components, you know, you know, this is the, who your ideal client is and this is what they're suffering from and this is what you bring. The formula is just to help you make sure you have all of the components you need so that you can then actually communicate that to whoever your audience is at the time. Because I think that's how you can use this as a formula, but not end up being super scripted, not being robotic, and actually just being able to use it in a way where it doesn't take you four years to feel comfortable saying what you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) 
something that happened in that clip that I want to really double down on is the fact that this whole goal with this standout statement, while it is scripted in advance, yes, you have something to work off of. That's not the goal. You're not supposed to have like this like literal elevator pitch kind of thing to where when people hear you say it, they're like, okay, bro, chill out. Like, it's not that serious. <laughs> like you are supposed to make this like a conversation. And that's why it's really important to kind of lead this standout statement with a question is because the whole goal of that is to get people to engage with you, right? That's the whole goal of this is to start a conversation and then allowing it to just flow organically. Because if you can get people to actually like talk to you about what you do versus you just telling them and they're like, oh, that's cool. And then that's it. Like, that's that's the difference. That's the difference between having a, a good conversation, which then builds a a foundation of like a of a of a potential relationship, which then builds the foundation of a potential client. Um, and in fact, I had this exact interaction not yesterday, two days ago. Two days ago, I was at a party, a Labor Day party, and my sister was in town from Florida with her husband. Um, her husband does like some uh, uh, food truck work. And they're from Florida. So they brought their whole food truck up for this event up here. And they brought their sous chef with them. And the sous chef heard my sister and I talking about work, uh, you know, like my coaching practice. And he was like, yeah, she mentioned that you did that. Like, t can you tell me more about that? And I was like, yeah, man, like, let's step outside for a second. And then I opened it up with that question. And then the conversation happened and I learned a lot about him. You know, he has a wife, her name is Shine, he has a daughter, like all these different types of things. And the only reason that, that happened is because of the conversation that came from it and not just the fact of like, oh yeah, I'm a financial coach, I help people with their money. Well, I'm really glad he didn't think you were going to beat him up when you said, let's take a step outside. Yeah, let's take this outside, uh <laughs> let's go all back. I'll show you what I really do. <laughs> oh, I, I am glad that you mentioned that it, it is not purely formulaic. Um, I would like to just mention to our listeners today that if you have not heard, because we did not include the actual formula in this clip. So if you would like to go back and listen to that, I encourage you to do so. We will put the link for this episode in the show notes for here. Um, but one thing I'd actually like to also bring up that was not mentioned in this clip, but I do think it's important, is that... Um, the the statement that I used in that particular one was that I help couples and families breathe life and meaning back into their personal finances. And uh, the person who had given me some feedback on that, one thing that they pointed out that I want to share with you today is that it's funny how long it takes to simplify what we do. And yet the genius is in the simplicity. I just want to share that because I think, I think I actually mentioned on there that I'm an overthinker and I suffer from that once in a while. And I think it's so hard to sometimes just take a step back and not overthink what we do. And this kind of gets back to why we do it, who are they becoming, and what is it that they're ultimately wanting. So I just remember whenever you are coming up with that statement that you are just being pretty simplistic with it. To that end... If you're anything like me, you struggle with this stuff. I cannot stand the infamous what do you do question. <laughs> I think we are so preoccupied with people's occupations and, and we make so much, you know, so many different rash decisions based off of what they respond. But I do think it is important that you have a response. And so this is something that I've personally struggled with. So if any of our, any of our listeners are like me, maybe you're like, you, you struggle with what is a financial coach anyway? And, and how do I convey that to somebody? So mm -hmm. I just wanted to kind of thank the two of you for having the conversation because it got me thinking about, okay, wait a minute, slow down long enough. I'm from New York and I'm, and I'm Italian. So I talk really fast and I talk with my hands. <laughs> and sometimes I just have to slow down, right? slow down, really think about, you know, what is the value that I bring to different types of people too. Cause that's, that's another part that I struggle with is Maria, you kind of said it like it, you overthink it and you try to perfect it for everyone. Well, this isn't something that should be rigidly scripted 
and that applies to everyone. It's how do I engage with people and just kind of talk to them about what it is that I do. Um, I have a tagline. I've had a tagline for forever, but, you know, really being able to kind of describe to somebody what it is that I do is, uh, has been more challenging. I appreciate the fact that you guys had the conversation and got me thinking. Of course. Yeah. I, I think that it's difficult because of what you just said, you know, what even is a financial coach? Uh, most people don't know what a financial coach is. Right. They, they hear that term and they're like, Oh, you're like a financial advisor. And then we as coaches are like, no, nope, <laughs> it's very different. And then we have to like try and explain it to them. And that's where it can get kind of contradictory between, you know, the simplicity that Maria was talking about. So in order to be able to explain that in a very fluid way, you need to be able to have a conversation with people. And in order to do that, you need to structure your standout statement in a way that allows a conversation to happen. Not only allows a conversation to happen, but something you said there, and I'm thinking about Maria's standout statement, you earn the right to explain further because your standout statement engages them. They start to ask questions. They lean in. Now you have an opportunity to try to be as succinct as possible <laughs> about what it is that you do as a financial coach. Mm -hmm. Because the question that they might ask and is, I think how do you do that? Right. If you've, mm -hmm. if you've crafted that statement in such a way, it leads to the person that you're speaking to asking, well, how do you do that? Or, or not like, the other side of that is they're so not your ideal client that it goes right past them. And they're like, Oh, cool. And they move on. And that's okay <laughs> Great too. Point. Right. So, yeah. yeah. And I love that you said that Mike too, because I think it goes back to us um, listening. Right. Uh, and, and to all of your points, really, it goes back to even the past couple of clips that we've talked about is really listening. So um, listening to what, the people that we're having the conversation with or who we're talking to, how they're asking those questions, right? Really listening to um, the words and the language that they're using. And it goes back to our why, right? And so when we know our why, we've got an emotional attachment to it. Um, it allows us to be able to explain what we do, to share what we do in a way that does breathe meaning back into there. You know, it, 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 we're speaking it out into the world, right? And I think the people, to Mike's point too, the ones that it just kind of goes over, then they're probably not your ideal client because they didn't catch the emotion that you um, were sharing, right? And um, I think a lot of it is just when you know your message and you're really confident in who it is that you're helping and why you're doing this, you're able to listen to what people are asking, how they're asking it, and you can tailor your standout statement to fit them um, and just change it just a little bit, right? It's not the broad everybody, but you know that they fit into that category. They just don't know it yet. It's mm -hmm. a great yeah. point. I like that part. Yeah. Uh, you know what I fit that they just don't know yet. I like that a lot. Uh, so as we kind of figure out like what it is that we do and who we do it for, I think that that allows us to know like what types of stuff to give them, you know, what are going to be some of the things that draw them into your life? So, you know, the standout statement can be something that's really great for networking events and that kind of thing. Um, but if you can figure out, you know, what is that problem that you solve for people and, and who do you solve it for? Then you can actually start to create products that are going to be good for them. They're going to help move them along. And I think that that's one of the things that we're going to be talking about soon is the, um, just how to create a good, strong lead magnet. It's one of my favorite things that Cody talks about because it's not one of my, it's not one of my strong suits in my business. Um, I, I can, I'm really good, like right there one-on-one, -on -one, but when it comes to creating something fantastic, I think that Cody really does a fantastic job with that. Uh, before we jump to that clip though, can I just say, I'm surprised no one in this panel mentioned anything about my analogy about the toilet seat. <laughs> I just, I'm just shocked <laughs> that that didn't come up, but, but I digress. Well, 
that 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 opportunity really went down the drain. <laughs> okay, we we couldn't get through an entire one of these without some sort of dad joke in there. I mean, you guys know that Cody's a relatively new dad again, and so he's really on on tap with those um, dad jokes. Anyway, all right, you guys, let's cue up <laughs> that strong lead magnet clip, and we'll talk about that next. The most important thing that you can do for creating your lead magnet is putting intentional time and effort into crafting a attractive name for it. Okay, mm. so not something that you're just like, oh, I'm a coach and, and this sounds good to me. The coach's mind doesn't matter. Amen. Okay? It's <laughs> all about the audience of who you're, who you're trying to get. And you need to really tap into their psyche and figure out like what do they want, mm -hmm. what what do they not not even really what they need, because that's what we as coaches do. Right. We, we're like, hey, they need this. They don't care about what they need. They care about what they want. Yep. Right. So putting the time, and and what I mean by time is like the name could honestly be the thing that you spend the most time on. Like be really, really intentional with that. And um, I'll even give like a personal example with that. So I recently put out a lead magnet um, that totally crushed all of my previous lead magnets uh, as in comparison. Like it, I think it performed like three or four times better than all of the rest of them. Nice. And um, the reason that it did was because of the name. And uh, Initially, I had the name of a three-step, or it was the three-step budgeting game plan. That was the initial name. Boring. And, yeah. <laughs> me, as, a, as a coach, as a coach, I was like, this sounds sweet. Like, this is what you need. Like, I, I was really jazzed up about it. But I took it to some, some of my, like, business colleagues that I kind of work with, and I was like, hey, like, what do you guys think about this? And it was like a group of, I don't know, like 10 or 12 people and all of them, every single one of them said, I hate it. And I was like, okay, <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah, like, like seriously. And I was like, why? And they're like, dude, the, the, the word budgeting just makes me want to run. Yeah. It makes me want to run. It makes me want to do nothing. Like, I don't want to have anything to do with this. That needs to change. And I feel like I we touched on this in the last on last week's episode, right? Yeah, we did. Yeah. We did. And this was something I just recently learned, too. So um, I had a hard time figuring out a, a new name for that because, I, I don't know, I, like, I don't think there's a sexy word for budget. Um, but I was able to come up with, with, the, with the name Money Map, right? So it's like a map for your money. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, you can, you can come up with your own name, whatever. You can use that. Who cares? Um, but... That's something that I came up with, and I came back to the group that initially told me no, and I was like, okay, well, how about the three-step money map? And they're all like, yes, mm -hmm. that sounds way more inviting. Yep. And I was like, okay, cool. So the name is very, very important, and I also think that like having a highlight is also important. And basically the highlights would be like almost like a subheader or like you know a, a, little, a little tagline. Um, so with that, you don't want to focus on the things that are negative. So I think that oftentimes, especially with me and my, in my previous lead magnets that didn't really work very well, I always <laughs> focused on like, you know, things like, uh, let me see here, you know, like relieve your anxiety and stress of money or something like that. Right. Mm -hmm. But even though you're saying like you're going to relieve that, you're still talking about the anxiety and stress. Mm -hmm. And just seeing those words and hearing those words makes people have anxiety and stress, yep. right? So that was something I learned. And instead of doing something like that, you should say, you should use words that are more empowering and, and give people, again, what they want. Mm -hmm. So what do people want? Well, people want to save more money. People want to rapidly eliminate their debt you know like people want confidence they want clarity all of those things instead of talking about getting rid of the negative don't even talk about the negative just build up the positive things that are going to happen for them 
right? Yeah, I like to talk about it as terms of, instead of talking about what you're running away from, talk about what you're running towards. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, exactly. So for me, real quick, a clip like this, I really appreciate because it's just very pragmatic. We're getting down in the weeds, we're rolling up our sleeves a little bit, and we're talking about what works versus what doesn't work. And we're giving solid examples. One of the things that I do not appreciate just in, whether it's a podcast or it's coaching itself, is I don't like when everything is theorized. It's theoretical. It, it's abstract. It's kind of like, well, if you do this, then maybe that'll happen. And instead, what we have here in this particular clip and what we have on the podcast through and through is real practical examples of how to kind of implement an idea or, or whatnot. So for our listeners, I mean, if you are new to the podcast and you, you haven't heard these things before, or you're just hearing these clips for the first time, even if you've been listening to Go back to some of these episodes because they are absolutely riddled with this type of gold where you guys are offering very practical ideas and application for those ideas. So I appreciate it. And I thank you guys again for doing it. It's our pleasure. I'm going to, I'm going to just piggyback on that for a second and let you know that, you know, that whole idea of, I think I ended that clip with, you know, rather than, running away from something like what are they working towards or something like that. Um, but whatever it was that I said, I want you to know that you can apply that conversation, that concept to just about anything that you're doing when it comes to coaching. So, uh, you know, any challenges that you create, any sort of, um, post that you put out there, just remember that when we speak with affirmative language rather than the negative language, it really does have a much bigger impact on the listener, on the reader, on your client. And so um, I just wanted to throw that out there because it's not something that is just reserved for your lead magnet. It can be used in any area of your coaching business. Mm -hmm. Cody, I have a question for you since that's your, your clip. That clip's actually from yes, December of last year, so nine months ago. What, if anything, have you changed or adapted or grown into in the last nine months different from that episode? Um, that's a good question. Uh, so I'm still using lead magnets uh, and still going with the same approach of like the name is the most important thing. And to be completely honest with you, I actually lost sight of that Uh for a moment. Um, and one new thing that I've been doing with my coaching practice over the last six months or so, I would say, is not just doing lead magnets, but also doing online events. So hosting like master classes and stuff like that, which has been really, really awesome. I actually really enjoy doing that as well. Uh, and it's a really good way to get new leads and to hop on calls with people. And the reason I said I got away from the whole idea of like spending, you know, being very, very intentional with what the name is. I had a masterclass that I spent some time on with the name and I thought that I was doing the right thing. Uh, but I did what I said not to do in this episode, which was I focused on the negative. I said, you know, like the title was like, you know, something along the lines of like three, three money mistakes that people make that, you know, make them full of anxiety and stuck in debt, you know, something like that. Very negative, very negative. Uh, and the whole thought process was like, all right, let's, let's tap into like, you know, the, the pain and the fear aspect of things to make people want to actually join so that they learn what not to do. Right. Uh, and it totally flopped. I think I had like three people show up. It sucked, you know, like, but those three people, they got value from it. And I was happy to do that for those people. Uh, but as compared to my previous ones, it was not, it was not very good. And I think a big reason for that is because my personal brand is generally pretty positive. So the fact that I went in a negative direction 
I don't think made sense to people. I don't think that it like connected very well. So after I did that masterclass, I was like, that clearly did not work. Uh, so I changed it to something along the lines of like, um, you know, it was the same exact masterclass, same content, but the name was different. And I did master your money for millennials, three keys to get your money up and debt down. So I gave them what they wanted. They want to be a master of their money. They want to get their money up. They want to get their debt down. I gave them literally everything that they wanted so that when they showed up, they got what they needed, right? And because of that one change, and I'll tell you, the only change that I made in that entire masterclass was the title. That one change caused it, go, caused it from three people to show up to 30 people to show up. It 10 x Mm-hmm. And that's the power of being so aware and so conscious of your name, of your lead magnet or your event or whatever. And also, you know what, guys? That's also a uh, a good example of sometimes you don't follow your own advice. <laughs> and sometimes it takes the hard way to learn things, even from yourself, again, six months down the road. Yeah. I always love how transparent you are with us on this show, Cody. Um, I would just like to say that sometimes our people don't know what it is that they want, right? Like they, they know what they're trying to avoid, but sometimes they don't have the language about what it is that they're actually seeking to find. And so with you being able to title it in a way that lets them know ahead of time what it is they're looking for, I think that that makes such a huge impact. And like I said earlier, you can use this in any area. I, I use it in, um, like emergency fund versus peace of mind. I stopped using the word emergency fund altogether and just talk about peace of mind because it is more about what you want to save for, not what you're trying to avoid. And so, but people, even though they know at a gut level that peace of mind is something that they'd be really, really after, at uh, that logical surface level, they're not thinking about that. So it just sometimes is good for us to give them that language. Yeah, and another another name for that that I've heard other people use is something that they call a swan account, which is a sleep well at night account. Because people want to sleep well at night. You know, they don't want emergencies. Even though that's what it's technically for, it's technically like a sleep well at night account or a peace of mind account, like you had mentioned. And that's just another prime example. Like the name, the language that we choose to use when trying to acquire new leads or start new conversations or bringing on new clients is extremely, extremely important. And if we're unaware of that, that might be the thing that might be standing in our way as coaches to be able to scale our business. Can I just highlight one thing that really stood out to me in this clip? And I'll be honest with you guys, this is not one of my strongest areas within my business. And so definitely learning here as we're talking and and learning from the episode. But one thing that you said um, in the episode and just now, Cody, was, you know, highlight what they want and give them what they need. You know, I think that that's a really powerful piece of this um, that I definitely have looked over. And so I've written that in several places to remind myself, right, that it's it's highlighting what they want, but giving them what they need. And to Maria's point, you know, when we can put the language to that, then they're going to know, oh, that's that's what I want. I, I wasn't for sure, but I do know that where I'm at right now is not it, right? And so um, I just wanted to highlight that, um, highlight what they want, give them what they need. I think that's powerful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because even going into like a different area, you know, let's just let's just say the health area, you know, like everyone knows that if they want to be healthier, you know, they need to eat better and work out more. Like that's what you need to do. But not many people want to do that, you know, so but if you can tell people like, hey, this is what you want, you know, you want to look good, you want to feel confident, you want to attract that lady or, or attract that guy or, you know, the guy of your dreams, whatever you want. That's what you want. So I got this potential solution over here. If you want it, come check it out. And then when they get there, then give them what they need, which is <laughs> you should eat healthier and work out more. 
Mm-hmm. Yep. So. Yep. Yep. Good stuff. Good stuff in that one for sure. That one is actually one of my favorite episodes. I love talking about that kind of stuff. Um, but I know that uh, Maria actually really likes talking about the other side of coaching. <laughs> well, one of the other side of coaching, which is more of like the internal aspects of coaching, which is weird because now we want to talk about a, a episode that's titled <laughs> the internal aspects of coaching. <laughs> but why don't we just roll this clip and listen to job. it and then hop in. <laughs> You know, like those two topics, like finding your why and figuring out who you want to become, Mm -hmm. those are two critical things that I, like, it's like a non-negotiable, like we need to talk about those things. Um, And I talk about them relatively early too, Mm -hmm. uh, because like, you know, you need to start with those. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's just, there's so much power behind it. Um, and it makes the entire journey that much more exciting and that much more enjoyable and that much more clear as well, too. Mm-hmm. Um, no pun and intended. I tell people this uh, <laughs> all the time. I'm like, you know, I, I want you to picture yourself as like an egg. OK, mm-hmm. and there's two ways for an egg to break. One is is for the egg to break on the outside. OK, so if you were to break on the outside Um, that egg would die. It would go into a frying pan. Uh, you know, maybe like a fox would eat it or something Mm -hmm. like that. Right. Me. That's what I had earlier today, actually. Yes. There you go. It was a Friday. (laughs) But it would die. And there's a lot of ways to break on the outside. You know, Mm -hmm. like you, you could break from, you know, just having so much payments coming out. You could break from living from paycheck to paycheck. You could break from anxiety, from depression, from, you know, a stressed marriage. There's so many ways to break from the outside. Mm -hmm. But if you only focus on just protecting that outer shell, you're going to be nothing but an egg inside of a carton. That's all you're going to be. But if you really focus on breaking through from the inside, and, th- and you're the egg, if you have a breakthrough from the inside, then there's life. You become a chicken, <laughs> right? Just what everyone's wanted to be. <laughs> yes. But there's life. That's yeah. the key. There's life. And you can start creating that life that you actually want. Why? Because you focused on the internal transformation to get there. Mm -hmm. And if you don't focus on that, and if you don't have that be a part of your curriculum, um, when you're, when you're coaching your clients, they could seriously be missing out on something truly magical. Yeah. Yep. And for those people who are listening, who are like type A and they're just like the box checkers, I want to make sure that you don't think that doing this exercise or this process with your clients is the first thing that you do and that that's the only time that you do it. The the reason that we would do this in the beginning is because it gives us a way to talk to our clients when, when they get stuck on something that this just happened to me last night with a client actually. Um, and one of the things was that they went off of their plan and his plan that the way he deviated from his plan was to buy a camper and he had the money to buy the camper, but the money had already been labeled, if you will, as an opportunity fund, because this is an entrepreneur who's really good at finding opportunities, flipping them, and then being able to turn that into his income. Um, And so one of the things he wanted to learn how to do was to be fully self-sufficient with that. So we had set up this opportunity fund so he would no longer have to go and get loans to do that. You following me, right? Mm-hmm. And, and so there was approximately $30,000 in this opportunity fund for him. And he found a camper. And the camper was about eight to $10,000. And he had the money, he used the money from his opportunity fund. And he allowed himself to convince himself that it was fine, because it was something that was important to him. It was a, it was a, a way for his family to connect and f- connecting with his family is very important. Well, if I hadn't done some of the foundational work, I mean, how do you, 
how do you like rebut that? Like, you can't be like, oh no, your family's not important. <laughs> like, you, this is like, wh- where do you go with that? What I was able to do though was talk to him about how what what is more important to you. Do you know what what did you steal from? Like I told him, you kind of put on a ski mask and you walked into a bank and you stole from your future self. And he's like oh man, like, why did you got to put it like that? And I said, well, it might be okay if the good cause was the fact that you were, you know, hanging out with your family. That's a really good cause. And he's like, yeah. And so he thought he was getting away with this for a second. I said, remind me why you wanted that opportunity fund. It's like, cause I really don't want to have to work full time. I said, and remind me why you don't want to have to work full time. And he was able to get it back to, well, it's for my family. So now we had Family versus family. And that's totally different than dollars versus dollars. Do I have it or do I not? And so we asked, I was able to ask him, which of those things is going to get you closer to what you actually want to do with your family? Being able to go camping and not sleep on the floor? Because he's been sleeping on the floor in his mind. Like he had said this in his words. We've been, we've been camping on the floor for eight years. So I said, so why why now? Why can you all of a sudden not camp on the floor? Right? And when he realized that he was giving up the the potential ability to not have to ever work full time for someone else. He realized, Oh, I probably shouldn't have done that. And and we didn't, we didn't get stuck in guilt. We didn't get stuck in the shoulds, woulds and coulds. What we did was help him understand when you're having that internal dialogue, this is what I want you to ask yourself because he was falling back into the old habit of asking himself, do I have the money for it? Well, the answer was yes, because we had done such a good job of setting that up. So he did have the money. And if we left it at that, he would have just spent it like he did. He would have continued that pattern later on. And yet he wouldn't have gotten in the end what he really wanted. So this Mm -hmm. is not just a check box, right? We don't just do it once to say, well, we've done it. Now let's move on. Let's get to the real stuff, the results. Instead, what I like to talk about is that we start with defining who you want to become and why. And then we start mapping out the processes. What would a person who is that person, what would their habits look like? What would their daily process look like? And we start Mm -hmm. using that to set up that middle layer. And then instead of focusing on the results, all we do is track them. We track the results. We measure the results because those are fun. Like we, We can get feedback from that, but that is absolutely not the focus. I want to say I love that clip and I want our listeners to go back and actually re-listen to a part of that, especially the egg analogy, because I think listen to it the first go round and laugh because there's kind of some funny pieces to that, but then go back and listen to it a second time to really get some of the, the, the pieces that you missed the first go round, because I've heard this several times and I'm picking up a little bit, you know, a new nugget each time. So I really want to encourage people to go back and re-listen to it because I think there's a lot more information there. (laughs) It might be a chicken nugget. (laughs) It might. Sorry. I I couldn't couldn't help myself. I'm sorry. Go ahead. (laughs) So, (laughs) and another dad joke and another, at least we're entertaining here. So if nothing else, there's some laughs, but, um, (laughs) Um, so chicken nuggets aside, um, one thing that, um, I really pulled out of that clip too, was that when we're using their words to help them see how their actions, um, impact their life, it's so much more powerful than just us telling them what to do. And I think that there's bits and pieces that we can provide, you know, some tools, you know, like may, you know, here's a tool for you to use. But when you're using their words, and this is what Maria was saying with, with the client, right? And do we have the money? And and if she would have left it at just that, it wouldn't have had the impact with him. But instead, she used his words to help him see his situation and how it impacted his life. I think that that out of everything is, is probably one of the most valuable pieces um, that we've talked about today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I would agree. And, um, you know, going back to the whole egg idea, um, you know, something that I, I'd mentioned in there, which I think, 
could be could be overlooked uh, without going back and listening to it a few times, like you had, Sarah, is the fact that like just because you're protecting yourself like on the outside from not like having that that uh, that break, which then causes you to go into the frying pan or whatever, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're creating the life that you want. It just means that you're protecting yourself in that carton, right? But that's not like a very cool life either. It might be safe. It might be protected, but you're you're just an egg in a carton. And eventually you're going to go bad. Like, you know, eventually you're not going to keep, right? So in order to have that breakthrough, you do need to really focus on the internal side of things. And, you know, I, I think that it's a really cool thing to think about because you have the opportunity to choose to create the life that you want daily. Hmm. You really do. It all starts with what's going on in your, in your mind and in your heart. And to have those conversations, not just once, but have it frequently, not only with yourself, but also with someone like a coach as well. You know, and, and that goes, that goes for our clients and for us as coaches too, like having people there to support us in our own journeys with our coaching business is very important because we need people to pull the best out of us as well. Not saying that we can't do it ourselves, but as we know, it's, it's always better when we have different perspectives and, and that we're able to get out of our heads a little bit. Yeah. I, I, if I can, I'm going to bridge what you two just said. Um, one of the things that I had picked up on in that clip was that there are certain pitfalls when you're just asking the question, you know, do I have, or do we have the money for this? And I think Sarah touched on some of it. And I, I know Cody, when you're talking about the egg carton and being protected, but it's not necessarily being fulfilled. I think, I think you were talking about coaches in general, but um, I would like to just say that when we are with our clients, when if they're just asking, do I have the money for this? That is, it's very limiting. And I think that it might, it might be like the carton. So, you know, when we set up a zero based budget and we ask ourselves, do we have the money for this? Or we set up savings accounts or opportunity funds or, or whatever it is. And we stop at, do we have the money for this? That is the carton. It's keeping us protected. The answer can be yes or no, and we might be protected. But are we or are our clients actually being fulfilled in that? And as you heard in the example with this client that I was talking about in that clip, he could have just stopped. But it would not have led him to the life that he ultimately wanted, which was to be able to not have to work full time anymore. And so um, I just encourage everybody today to, to take these things and put them all together um, that it's okay to ask yourself, do we have the money for this? In fact, it's probably an important thing because if the answer is no, you might want to rethink that. Uh, but don't stop there. Don't just sit in that curtain, you know, that that's not going to be where you actually be, have that life that comes forth, which was the ultimate reason that um, Cody talked about becoming a chicken, even though I joked with him. On the actual clip. <laughs> mm -hmm. And can I say that this, this episode really caught me a lot because I say that um, I use the create your life every day in a lot of my language. And when I'm talking with um, not only potential clients out in social media, but I also use it with myself. And for those of you that don't know, <clears throat> my husband and I are full-time RVers. And one thing that I share that we choose to live this life every day, it wasn't a decision that we made one day. It's a decision that we make every day because we are creating this life every day. And at any period of time, we can say, no, this is not what we want to create anymore, right? We, we can choose to do something different. And so I say that, that we make this choice every day. It wasn't one decision. And so for our clients, for ourselves with our coaching business, right? We can choose to make a different decision tomorrow because we want to create something different or we want to expand on what we've started to create. Mm -hmm. But it's a choice every day. And along with that choice, we know that um, when we set out, you know, with the, the question, do we have the money for this? Right. That was a question that we asked. 
But we definitely took it farther and said, okay, what are we trying to do? What is our purpose behind this? What is the the point of being a full-time RVer, right? And we had to have the money conversation of, okay, yes, we've got the money, and I'll use air quotes here. We've got the money to do this, but what is it that we want to do, right? What is the point? And so um, how do we want to spend our money, and how can we live this to the fullest and what do we really want to experience and so i think that just dig in with clients but really with yourself and having that honest conversation with yourself and then knowing when you make that decision there are things on the other side that um and i'll say that you you maybe leave behind right and that that's that's important to overlook. And Maria, you said, um, you know, is your future self going to be upset with you, right? Knowing that the choices on the other side, you know, that the things that happen as a result of the choice that you're making today is so powerful. Um, and that's why it's, I think, paramount to go beyond the, do we have the money for this? Um, because it can lead to so many things, but really creating your life every single day it's not a decision once. And I think I certainly had it in my head uh, through a lot of years that, oh, well, we made this decision and there it is. It's an everyday thing. Yeah, that adds an extra layer Every of day. intentionality to mm-hmm. to your entire story, which I think is fantastic. And, and, you know, once we decide what it is we want to do and we have some of that intentionality, then I think that another fantastic part of that is the accountability in there. So um, I I believe that the next clip that we want to play actually is with uh, someone that we had on the podcast. It was a guest. And so we have, we love having guests on the show. Um, It just helps to bring in new perspectives and questions and all of that. And, and this particular individual was Tim. And we talked about certain struggles of, you know, just what it is like to be in the coaching process. And, and one of the things that he brought up was having some built in accountability. So if we could have Mike queue up that one, then we can discuss that and whatever else we have in store from Tim and Cody and I. So going back, um, you had said two things. One was that, you know, you, you, even to this day, um, kind of struggle with finding the balance of, you know, working your your job and also doing coaching on top of that. And then you also mentioned that you're a little bit of a perfectionist too, right? Um, and I know from experience and just talking to a lot of people that those are two things that a lot of new coaches struggle with. You know, like finding that balance of like what, well, you know, like I'm trying to build the coaching business, but... I need to put food on the table for my family, so I need to keep working my job until that gets to a point where I can take that step. And, you know, when you're trying to start something, too, you you know, you always want to make sure that all your ducks are in a row and everything's perfect, stuff like that. So is there any sort of advice to, to someone who might be just starting out that might be struggling with either one of those? You know, Cody, uh, being a perfectionist, I, I felt that I wasn't prepared enough to start coaching after I finished the training that I had. So I spent a lot of time building out my coaching roadmap and the materials that I would use to take people through what it is that I wanted to educate them on. I wasn't in a rush to start my business um, because I also, I had a full-time job. So for me, it was just making sure that I really was ready to start when I felt ready to start. Um, Mm -hmm. so, so one of the pieces of advice that I would give is, you know, seek out a good coach in the beginning, especially for like handling the business side of things, the administrative side of things, get that out of the way quick, you know, so then you can really start to learn, grow and develop in the areas of coaching that are really important. Like the ability to really listen, the, um, the ability to ask effective questions, uh, getting to the root cause of your client's problems uncovering their values and helping them work through it and, and, and whatever obstacles get in their way, that's where the value of coaching comes in. Not what spreadsheets you use or what pavement system you use or any of that other stuff. And although it's very important, we still need to figure that out. And for a lot of new coaches, th- those are the first hurdles that they have. Hey, what do, how do I set my business up? Am I a sole mm-hmm. proprietor? Am I an LLC? 
I have, I have, I volunteer time to a lot of coaches and have one-on-ones with them just to help them through those decisions because we we can waste so much time there. We really can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a lot of distractions there. Yeah, there sure are. Yeah. Yeah. And I love the fact that you said, reach out to another coach, you know, whether, whether you actually hire another coach for you or, you know, you just like seek mentorship or you try and network and you learn from other coaches, whatever route you want to take. I, I totally agree because that's, that's how I started building my coaching practice was in fact, that's the reason why we're here today is because like one of the first coaches that I connected with, um, was new money habits, you know, and, and I, I was a little young buck coach. I had no idea <laughs> what I was doing. I really didn't even know what financial coaching was when I first connected with, uh, Mike, which is one of the new money habits coaches. And he just like hopped on the phone with me for an hour and just talked to me. And I was super, super appreciative of that. And then not only did he do that, but then he continued to stay in touch with me and answered any sort of questions I had throughout the entire process. And I can honestly say that I don't know what would have happened if I didn't have like that support system um, or that kind of coach in my corner. So I think that's huge. Like that's a huge, huge, great piece of advice there. So I just want to take a moment to personally thank live on air. Mr. Mike Keneally, Uh, because Mike is quite literally the reason that I am here today uh, and also the reason why you're listening to this podcast today, Um, because Mike was Mike was the first person to ever show me support in getting my business up off the ground. And, you know, I'm sure that I would have found a way and all that jazz But I don't think that I would have had the start that I did without the guidance that Mike had had given me and also the support that he continued to show me for not just one conversation, but for months and months, which then turned into years as well. Uh, so I just want to say thank you to Mike and, you know, just, just use that one example in my personal life to show why it is so important, just like we talked about in that clip, to have a coach for us as coaches, you know, whether it be like Tim said, in our, in our business aspects of things or, you know, fine tuning our coaching abilities or whatever it might be, having someone there who has been in the game longer than you or might know different things than you to help lift you up is extremely valuable. And for me, a big person for that was Mike, Mike Keneally. Uh, So Mike, I just want to say thank you to you personally. Well, I appreciate the kind words, Cody. And, And I also want to put all that credit back on you because you did all the work. And, you know, that's our job as a coach is to provide, to be, to be a guide, right? To, to provide some guidance and be there to support you and cheer you on, which, you know, I think all of us have celebrated your success because you've done some amazing stuff as, as a coach and, and we're excited to see where that goes for you. You know, and then talking about the importance of having a coach, it's so important that as a coach that you've been on the other side or you spend time on the other side of the table with a coach and really understand what that process is and what it feels like. So that you can be, you can understand that from the perspective of a client. You know, the whole, one of the biggest reasons that New Money Habits came to be and that Nino and Maria and I partnered together is that once we met, once we started communicating and collaborating, we found that we were coaching each other. We were talking about different client issues and successes and pain points and how would you handle this and how do you handle that? So it was just became a great resource for us to start to improve as coaches by getting that other perspective. Then we started to recognize that people like you and like Sarah are out there trying to figure out how do I do this? How do I bring value to other people? How do I scale this thing? How do I, how do I grow as a coach? Which is why we've created this podcast and the new money habits podcast and the communities that we have so that we can, part of it's a selfish self interest. I'll be completely transparent on that because we get as much as we give. Sometimes we get more than we give because we're learning from your challenges or your successes and your clients 
challenges and successes. So it's been a, an incredibly valuable process for us. And we hope that we're giving some amount of that value back to the coach community. Can I say, I love that you said that, Mike, that, um, you know, being on the other side of the table too, right? And so we understand what our clients are going through and, and who we're having a conversation with. And, you know, I think I've shared this before, certainly not on this podcast, but when I was a coach and had my practice up, now I had a lot of conversations with coaches and connected, which were all extremely valuable. But when I really hired coaches to work with, I hired two coaches and my business grew by 600% in one year. And when I hired another coach, right, the following year, um, I'm up about 128%, right? And so there is actual... There, there's a measurement even for me in my own business and what it looks like when I work with coaches, how it changes who I am as a coach, and it actually changes the financial side of my coaching business as well and how powerful it is to have not only conversations, but to actually work with a coach one-on-one, -on -one. allow them to help pull out your blind spots, right? And to help guide you into that next level of coaching that you want to go to and, um, it really, you know, and, and I'll be honest, and I think this is full transparency for me as well as in the beginning, I didn't necessarily want to hire a coach because I felt like it was kind of competition, you know, and what I recognized was this isn't competition. We're, we all have unique strengths. We all speak to different people. We all have different language. Working with another coach just builds on all of those. Um, and it's just so powerful. I appreciate that you saying the reason that you didn't want to do that. Um, I can say that for myself, I never really saw it as competition, but I was definitely stuck in scarcity. And so when I first, I mean, when I first became a coach, I, <laughs> I had just come off the, the tales of, you know, not spending anything forever, like, because we were trying to become debt free and, and questioning the cost of every little thing. And always focusing on the cost of every little thing. And so to hand over $1,500, $2,500, um, ultimately the one that I went with was $10,000, like to hand over that amount of money to somebody was, it, it was, it was an absolute life changer. And it was not because of the amazing things that this coach actually did. For me, it was an internal shift. And it was that shift of to or from everything costs something to there is a value to things. And it's okay to invest in value, especially if that value is myself. And it's not like that egotistical, you know, oh, I'm so important that I have to invest in myself. It's, it's really not that. It's, it's just a real humble recognition that if I want to go out and do the things I'm purposed to do, I can invest in that and recognize that there are other people who are going to be able to help me do that better. And so I encourage anybody who's listening today, especially if you are like a lot of financial coaches who've done their own thing and now they're going to go and do this again. If you're stuck in that mentality of like, oh my gosh, that's going to cost a whole lot of money, whether it's with us or anybody, it doesn't even matter. This is not a sales pitch. It's just, it's a, it really is a mindset shift, you know, that it, it's okay to invest in yourself. Uh, do it wisely, still, still do it intentionally and wisely. Uh, but don't be so scared to, you know, let go of that cost because there, I know we've heard of opportunity costs and I think a lot of times people forget the opportunity cost. We hear about it and we're like, oh, well, if we hadn't spend the money on this car, you know, we could have invested it in the 401k and we're missing out on that opportunity. Yeah. Okay. What about the other side of that? What about when you don't invest in yourself or in this, this project that you're working on? What opportunities are you letting go out the window for yourself and for the people who would have been put in your path? To me, that is a much bigger opportunity cost than what I'm missing out on in my 401k. I think Sarah just gave us a, a fantastic example of that, right? The opportunity she would have missed out on is growing her business by 600% Amen. and then another 120% on top of that. Now that's some compound interest right there. I wish I could get that kind of return 
on some of my investments. 401k, do you? <laughs> right, yes. So, you know, I think you pair her example with what you just said, Maria, and that is what opportunities are you letting go of because you might have scarcity mindset? And that is something that, Maria, I got to credit you for with me in my own coaching practice when we first um, met up and got to know one another, it, it helping me to understand that, you know, you can't be afraid of kind of failure, which is funny because I come from an education background and I, I'm a huge proponent of like failure is good because we learn from it when it's tied to $1,500 or $2,500 or $10,000. We feel less good about that failure uh, if it comes. But the funny thing is it, it very rarely ends up in complete failure. You, you learn something, you grow from it, you implement something new and you see returns. You can't be promised 600% returns, but you see returns. Well, and you say you can't be promised that. And of course you can't be promised, but I, I always encourage people to look forward and look at what the ripple effect is of something. I can tell you without a doubt that if I had not invested that $10,000 in that coach, which none of you on this panel has ever met, maybe you never even heard of, New money habits would never have existed. This podcast would never have existed. My podcast, my personal one, never would have existed if I had not invested in that. And so if you start taking those steps backward and go, oh, well, this is all here because of my willingness to do that, you start to really say, mm, yeah, it wasn't a failure. And even if I like, even if I never met the guy again and didn't get what I was promised from that person, which I did get what I was promised, but even if I hadn't, all of this other stuff came from it. And that guy never could have promised any of that because he doesn't know you guys and he didn't know my future. So just something else to keep in mind. Yeah. I want to say a few things. Um, first of all, what we're talking about, <clears throat> we have all practiced what we've preached. Um, I have hired coaches. I'm actually going to hire another uh, coach here in probably a month, um, which just like Maria, I'm going to be spending $10,000 on. And I'm okay with that. Uh, and the reason I'm okay with that is because I had a similar situation to Sarah to where with my, with my decisions to hire coaches in the past, my business has, has tripled, you know, it wasn't 600%. You know, that's, that's something I'm shooting for this time, hopefully, but you know, it, it did triple. Um, and it, that was a huge blessing. And one thing I want to say, and, I, and quite frankly, I want to be real with not only us in this room, but also the listeners. We can't expect people to sign up for coaching with us if we don't believe in coaching. Mm -hmm. Mic drop. <laughs> quite literally. How can we identify with people and relate with people and say, Hey, I understand how you're feeling right now. I understand that it's a little nerve wracking to do this, but I know from experience how that feels. And I also know from experience what the outcome is too, from investing into coaching. How can we actually say that if we've never done it ourselves? So this is something that we can't just go out and be a coach and just do our thing. I mean, we can, but how effective are we actually going to be in our coaching without actually having someone coach us? Yep. And it will come into play with pricing too. Like you'll, it's, it's funny because I'll see a lot of people who are afraid to price themselves, you know, at, at a higher ticket price and almost every single time, if they're afraid of that, it's because they haven't paid a higher ticket price. Yeah. I'm not afraid of that anymore. Mm -hmm. I've, I I've spent enough money. Three, <laughs> yeah. I, I spent 3,000, 8,000, 10,000, uh, 12,000, you know, like, and I'm, I'm totally okay with asking for $5,000. You, you, you haven't spent that. It, I don't even want that nigh anymore. Yeah. At first I was super scared, but that was because I never actually did it. Right. And now that I have, I'm like, okay, cool. Like I feel way more comfortable with this because I know what it's like. That wasn't, the, that wasn't a spend. That was an investment every time. Mm -hmm. yep. Exactly. Words matter. 
Well, one of the things that I picked up from that clip that I just wanted to kind of address too is uh, it got me thinking about how early on one of the biggest struggles coaches have is like with the imposter syndrome, feeling like they don't necessarily belong. I think, Maria, you just kind of um, highlighted one of the ways that they 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 show people that they don't feel like they belong is through the way that they price their their rates and uh, you know their coaching, whatever that might be, whether it's hourly package, whatever. And I think that imposter syndrome kind of hangs about until you find out that you're like really like working within your gifts. I know for me, I struggled with charging uh, clients at first. I think every financial coach probably starts off where they're they're like, I'm going to do a couple of pro bono cases and and I'll have some clients just kind of build up my my uh, my muscle in this this space or whatever. And and then when I um, finally was going to charge somebody. And I was nervous to kind of give them the price. They were immediately, yes, where, how, how do I pay you? Like, how do I get you that money? <laughs> um, and so for me, you know, it was partly the gifts part, but it, it was also this sense of community and getting around like-minded coaches and, and you know, Maria meeting you and then eventually meeting Mike and forming new money habits and then, creating a, a coaches community and meeting Sarah and Cody and so many other great coaches really just starts to bolster. You, you, you get to share some of those intrepidations and then you realize like other people were there and they give you really helpful ways to kind of overcome that and move forward. And so I wanted to bring all of that up because I want to offer a very special gift to our listeners. And it doesn't matter if you this is your first episode or you've been hanging out with us for the entire year. But if you're listening to this, you're a financial coach. And if you are not around like-minded people yet, yep, come and hang out with us. We have a Facebook group. We have um, some other really cool things. But I want to offer a very specific gift to anybody listening. For a limited time, we want to offer you two months of our Coaches Plus membership for free. And that is going to um, get you access to our Facebook group. It's going to get you on the roster to uh, join us for our monthly meetups where we actually come together on Zoom uh, live and we we talk about uh, our practices. We talk about what's working and what's not working and the struggles we're having and, and we come up with solutions and it's amazing. And uh, as part of that package, we don't normally also offer a one-on-one, -on -one, but we want to offer you a one-on-one -on -one to sit down with any one of the five of us uh, on the, the uh, show today and explore your practice, figure out like whether you are thinking about this, so you're kind of in that dreamer state, or you've already launched and you've had some success, or you've been doing it for a while and you just kind of want to resharpen the, the tools in your toolbox no matter where you are on that, that spectrum, we're going to provide a link in the show notes that's going to give you access to two months of Coaches Plus for free and a free sit down with Sarah, Maria, Mike, Cody, or myself. And so, again, limited time offer, so take advantage of, of that sooner rather than later and immerse yourself in this growing group of like-minded people who are seeing all sorts of successes left and right. The old saying goes, iron sharpens iron. That's right. right. And this is an opportunity to make that saying come to life. Because, you know, not only is having the, the two free months pretty cool. Like, personally, I, I look forward to those meetups every month. I, I get a lot of value from it. Uh, and it's just full of really good people, too. But I really think that the, that the value uh, of having those one-on-one -on -one calls with it could be any of us you know it could be myself it could be maria it could be mike sarah nino it doesn't matter you know choose your choose choose your poison you know uh <laughs> but i mean it could be any of us but being able to sit down with us um and just talk to us and you know pick our brains and and ask for some feedback that's how this whole thing starts for a lot of people that's how it started for me I called Mike and I had a sit down one-on-one -on -one 
with Mike. And I picked his brain about literally everything that I could think of. And he was more than happy to just provide value. And that's honestly the thing that allowed me to step into growing and starting my business in ge- in general. So we want to give that same gift to you, that same opportunity to you to see you just step into this world and just run with it. Or like Neo said, if you're already in this world, let's let that iron sharpen that iron, you know, because mm-hmm. we, the whole goal is to be able to just become a better coach so that we can help more people more effectively. That's the whole goal. And that's all we want to do with this call. So I'm excited to see who comes through the, through the, uh, through the link or whatever. I think we're doing the a link, right? door. The promo code. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited to see who comes through and I'm excited to talk to people. And uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So, and I'm excited to see who picks who for poison. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And this is this is gonna be like I don't know. Now you guys might not have seen this, but there's a Disney movie called Emperor's New Groove, mm-hmm. right? You know, it could be one of those potions. You know, like you could you could t- take it and turn into a llama. Who knows? <laughs> I don't think it's gonna happen. I think that you're gonna take this potion and it's gonna be like a really good potion. And you'll be like, yeah, I'm feeling like Arnold Schwarzenegger coming out of this thing. You know. Uh, but yeah, it'll, it'll be good. But I can't guarantee it won't be a llama. I'm just saying. <laughs> or chicken. I mean, you talked about us turning into chickens. Like, what's going on, Cody? Yeah, like, what, what's disclaimer. happening here? Let me tell you something. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Jokes are on point. <laughs> Sarah, <laughs> are you feeling a little out of place here? Because uh, I'm starting to. <laughs> Um, well, that and my kids are older, so I don't know about all this. This is, I don't even, zero words, zero words. Oh, we should go back to lifting the toilet seat up and you and I will have something to talk about then. <laughs> you guys, I, I just want to wrap this up by saying thank you so much to all three of our guests that we've had on the show today. Really, uh, you know, it's been a great culmination of the past 52 weeks, 52 episodes. I know Cody and I have had a, a just an amazing time. He mentioned at the beginning that we get as much, if not more value from this as you guys do is listening. So uh, we just want to say thank you again for all of that. Remember, we have not asked you yet, but please do remember to continue to rate our show for us. Leave comments, um, reviews. That's really going to help this show get into the hands and ears of anybody else who is in the same position you are, that they're just wanting some support. So we would appreciate that. And of course, we want you to join the Facebook group, as we always encourage you to do. Look for the promo code that Nino mentioned in the show notes today. And Cody, unless you've got anything else, we'll let these fantastic people go until next week. All I got to say is I'm looking forward to the next year. Sounds great. It's going to be a fun time. Mm-hmm. All right. So yeah. thanks for hanging out and we're excited to see you over the next, uh, the next season. So very good. See you guys next week. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the financial coaches podcast. Brought to you by New Money Habits and Sizemore Financial Coaching. Submit your questions to our hosts by emailing podcast at newmoneyhabits.com. Be sure to subscribe to be notified of future episodes and join our growing group of like-minded coaches on Facebook. And until next time, happy coaching. Music provided by Summer School.